Hello friends, welcome to Connected. Once again, we meet here to connect with friends from all over the world. I hope all of you find yourselves happy and ready to enjoy the weekend. My name is Fabiana Espinosa and I will be guiding you through today's journey from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. I want to thank you for taking the time to connect with me. Remember that you don't only see us through the Abby Ayala channel, but also through Facebook, Twitter, and our channel on YouTube. shows I had the pleasure to interview amazing women. Wasn't planned, just happened that way and it does make me especially happy. Today we cherish the courage and determination of Renata Vaz Pinto. She is a young Brazilian woman that has left Brazil more than 10 years ago. Her path includes motherhood, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Samba and Capoeira. She has been traveling around, participating in competitions and giving workshops in different cities of the U.S. She is an unofficial representative of the Brazilian culture in Kansas City, USA. It is my pleasure today to introduce Renata Vaz Pinto. I like to, when I meet people like this, I like to call them cultural ambassadors, even though they are not official, but I feel like these kind of people, the ones that migrate from one place to another, but also takes the time and make their living out of maintaining their culture alive and sharing their habits. It's a beautiful thing to do for me. So Renata, thank you so much for being in the show. Welcome and let's go ahead with the first question. Please tell us, back in Brazil when you used to live there, how did you get in touch with capoeira, samba and jiu-jitsu? Did you have any influences? Yes, uh, living in Brazil, I was born and raised um, in an area of Brazil that was not um, uh, well developed, let's say. So I went to um, non-private schools where a lot of the, the kids there didn't have the money to spend on martial arts or dances that were quite, quite expensive, such as ballet or piano lessons and stuff like that. So they offered capoeira classes for the non-privileged kids from my school. And unfortunately, I was never allowed to take dance, samba, or capoeira among the students because I had parents that were very close-minded. Um, so that desire, that dream to become a dancer, to become a capoeira teacher or a capoeira student, and you know, bring uh, brought that to me over the years. The, the 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 desire just increased. So I was exposed to it at a very early age, and I could never do it because my parents were very close-minded. So um, as I moved and I grew and I uh, had the opportunity, I emerged myself into that culture, and I never stopped. That's awesome. So where were your teachers from? Did you learn it uh, back there or you started when you moved to the U.S.? I started Samba and well Samba I'm gonna say I started um, on my own in Brazil because Samba is in our blood it's like football right it's always on the TV it's always on the radio my dad uh, used to own a bar back in Brazil when I was young so every night there's a samba party. Every night there was loud music and people dancing. So at a very young age, maybe five or six, that's when I started getting introduced to the rhythm. And I never took any professional classes back in Brazil, but once I moved to the United States, um, I found a school that taught capoeira, which was in that deep inside my heart that I wanted to do. 
and capoeira and samba goes together because capoeira was developed by the slaves back in the 1700s and they also created the rhythm of samba so the two go together we always dance at the end of capoeira uh, performances so um, I started taking classes, formal classes, once I moved to the U.S. back in 2003. Right. Okay, so how did you, your journey start? When and how did you say, okay, it's time to move, I'm going to leave Brazil, and I'm going to the United States? What happened there? Well, uh, like I said, I was born and raised in an area of Brazil that was not very well developed. And being a third world country um, doesn't give individuals in Brazil a whole lot of opportunities. Right. So if you don't have good connections or money, most likely you're not going to have a well-paying job in Brazil. And um, I was very fortunate to have uh, family members living in the U.S. Um, since the 70s. So I had people here that could uh, host me and introduce me to a whole new language. And um, I came to the U.S. in 2003 with the help of my uncle on my dad's side of the family. And the idea back then was just to go to high school, learn English and go back to Brazil. Right. But once I got over here, I fell in love with the culture itself. Um, I realized that learning English was not going to take me out, you know, very far in Brazil. I needed more than that. So I went to college and meanwhile, I found the opportunity to bring the Brazilian culture to the U.S. and I decided to make the U.S. my new home. Right. And during that time of like moving from Brazil here and deciding to stay in the U.S., did you have any struggles and in which ways did you see your life changing? Yes, very, very difficult to start with. Many struggles. I spoke no English when I got to the U.S., so high school was very tough. Um, I suffered bullying in high school. Um, I went to college um, and you know my English was still not very good so I struggled a lot not speaking the language and I was very young. I didn't even know how to drive back then because in Brazil it was still go to have a driver's license at the age of 15. So um, communicating, getting to places, job. I couldn't find a well-paying job back then. Um, so many struggles there which pushed me to use the abilities that I had. And back then, I knew how to dance. So that's all I knew how to do. And that's one of the things that got me going, that you know got me through the struggles in the beginning. Right. Okay, so after all high school that I'm sure it was a nightmare and everything else that you were able to pass on. Tell us about the Brazilian Academy in Kansas City. How did it all start and what were the beginnings? The Brazilian Academy was created back in 2010 after many years of dedicating to the arts and to bringing the culture to our community. Um, we, um, we, I say, my husband and I, we've been, uh, he's also a dancer and martial artist. And uh, together we created the Brazilian Academy. And uh, what it is, it's a culture center that provides not, not only dance and martial art classes, but as well as language uh, classes, free classes for the community. And, um, that is just basically our our mission is to bring the Brazilian culture to the United States, to the community that we live to. So we have classes here and on top of that we do a lot of shows at high schools, elementary schools, we perform at bars, convention centers, nightclubs, um, we do all that here in the U.S. Um, where we live, as well as teaching overseas. I see. So let's say the academy divides it not only on the jiu-jitsu martial arts, arts, but also the samba dancing and also capoeira, right? As well as Muay Thai, 
and Tai Chi. So we have more and Portuguese classes. And Portuguese classes, that's so amazing because it's very integral, right? Like if you really want to have the idea and to have the experience about Brazil, for a person that doesn't come from there, it's just a, a beautiful mm -hmm. tool and beautiful way to do it. So tell me more about that. You, I've been seeing your, uh, your activity and you've been, you traveled around um, in different cities, going to uh, competitions. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, once a year we go to a competition in Phoenix, my Samba students and I. Um, there's a international Samba competition that happens once a year in Phoenix and every year we take a few students. Um, I feel like they've been able to grow a lot through uh, the rehearsals that we do to go to that. We also um, we also teach uh, capoeira and samba in events that we have in the U.S. I've been to Texas, California, New York, um, as well as to the U.S. Virgin Islands, um, St. Martin. Uh, Portugal, Costa Rica. So um, once you get into that world, you know, you start getting to know more people and um, the students here are, they love the art and they love the culture, so they love to share. So not only myself, but my students, they travel and they go to places. So we teach and we give them the opportunity to show what they accomplish throughout the months. Twice a year, the Brazil Academy hosts a um, cultural show for the community, uh, which is happening this weekend, actually. And we bring about 10 to 15 people from outside of the states. And then we offer free classes for the community. And all of our students get to get their graduation, either on Samba, Capoeira, or Jiu-Jitsu. So this weekend, our Capoeira students are getting uh, their graduation, and they get to show off to the community so we make it a big party we have an open house the guests come and then at the end of the week they will have workshops we have a culture show for the community and then at the very end we have a big party so we have a dj uh live music with a band and it just becomes a big party so it's really fun it's a lot of fun we're just a big family over here Right, I love to hear how much the community participates. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so tell me about, let's say, how do you put your groups together? Let's say in a group, or do you have people from different ages? Let's say for Samba, because, right, you have to kind of get in a rhythm and start doing it. So how long does it take or how long does the courses uh, last? We have intro, uh in the media and advanced classes separate, but we have classes there for everybody. So we have an all levels class. And honestly, somebody's for everybody. I've taught classes with little kids from like seven, eight years old among adults that are 20, 30s, 40, you know? So there's no secrets. It's just the steps and really feeling the music. We believe a lot in your emotions, you know? Samba is supposed to be the best part of your day. It's supposed to be you leave all your stress and all your struggles outside the door and you come in just to have fun. Mm. So we really, really emerge into the music. We close our eyes. We have our little meditation section. And then, you know, slowly we'll get our feet and our hips and our shoulders and our, you know, our mind into it. So. Um, yes, we can have little, we do have little kids class, we have beginners and intermediate, but what I really love is to see everybody together having a good time. That is great. And also, Renata, uh, okay, when it comes to Jiu Jitsu, which is very well known in the world, but also how is the, the image of the women as a fighter in Jiu Jitsu? What happens there? Do you have many students? Do you go also to competitions with your students? Yes, I actually just started a all women's class about three months ago. Um, I've been a Jiu Jitsu practitioner since 2008. And I've been to many competitions. Um, there's the International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation um, here. And um, they have a 
I would say over 20 or 30 uh, competitions per year. And um, they have the Pan Americans, the Worlds, the, um, the last one they had was the Worlds in August. And we took a group of 15 people to Las Vegas uh, wow. to compete. And some of those were women. Um, I have to say that in the last couple of years, Jiu Jitsu has grown so much and the women are um, getting to know Jiu Jitsu more. And I am so happy that women are willing to try the classes because I find it very important to ladies to know how to defend themselves. Right. Um, call me crazy, but I am a runner, you know, I do half marathons and I like to go jog on the streets, on the trails, and you never know who's behind you or who's watching you. So right. knowing how to, you know, hold somebody down on the floor, maybe, you know, immobilize the person, chokes, arm bars, wrist locks, ankle locks, you know, just stuff to give you enough time to run away is very important. So I motivate and I try to tell every woman that I know that it's important for them to know Jiu Jitsu. Right, and actually it is something great, especially if you start from a young age, right? Because you already come with that idea with set up in your head that you are also capable mm -hmm. of defending yourself, not only always being the victim, right? Exactly. And that's what we're here for. We just want to, you know, encourage women to right. take advantage of all the skills that sometimes they don't know it's even there. I know we are capable of, you know, we're not as strong as some of the men, but if you have the right technique, Correct. you might be able to, you know, to go above and beyond their expectations. That is so true. Okay, so let's move on now and talk about capoeira. How is it there? Is, do you guys get together, also travel, workshops? How do you guys work with capoeira? Um, capoeira is challenging. Not everybody knows what capoeira is. So people think it's a dance, although it's a martial art. Um, capoeira, there's no rehearsing in capoeira. There's a lot of kicks, takedowns, as well as backflips and you know, stuff like that. So people confuse capoeira with you know, gymnastics and taekwondo. Um, so there's definitely the aspect, the show aspect of it, so it's very flashy, you know, but it's very dangerous as well. So capoeira, the idea of capoeira is for you to kick me on the head and I need to get out of the way, does, and counter kick you as fast as I can. Of course, we love each other, we don't actually hurt each other here at the gym, but there are fights that break in sometimes. So the students are trained to be able to defend themselves on the streets if necessary, but we are very strong community. So capoeira is more about community. It's not about just competition, competition, competition. So there's not a whole lot of competitions in capoeira, but there's a lot of community. You eventually will learn Portuguese because we're always singing songs through the classes. Right. Um, a lot of coordinations, um, you gotta clap as you're singing and a lot of people, believe me, don't know how to do that. <laughs> so capoeira requires a lot of coordination, a lot of um, upper body and you know, uh, going up and down the whole time. So you get a full body workout. Right. You get um, the community aspect of it. We travel together, we go to events, not competition, we go to events, so we take workshops. There's a lot of women in Capoeira, you would be surprised. So wow. it's a great place for the entire family. So we don't have only like boys or girls training Capoeira. We have moms and dads and kids. Our Capoeira, it welcomes everybody. So it's, it's amazing to work with Capoeira because everybody can do Capoeira. If you're in a wheelchair, you can still do capoeira because you can play music, you can sing. You, there, there's so much that everybody is welcome. So that's what I love about capoeira. That's what I, you know, it, it makes me proud to be involved in this small part because it's for everybody. Right, very inclusive. Um, okay, so Henata, and of course, we've been seeing all the images and it's just so amazing the work that you guys do. We are gonna go to a really fast cut and when we come back, we'll do the last question for you. People at home, don't go anywhere. We'll come back with more Renata and more Brazil. Stay connected.
welcome back and thank you for remaining connected. Renata, we have the last question for you. Unfortunately, I wish we could have more time and see more of your videos and know more about everything that you guys do. So going through your, um, your page, I saw that you were able to actually go to Japan. How was that experience? How did you get in touch? How did you get invited? How did they receive you there? Tell us about it, please. Japan is amazing. I was so proud and honored to be invited to go to Japan. Um, we, through Capoeira, we know a lot of friends uh, around the world and um, we get these invitations every once in a while to go to Japan or go to the Caribbean. So those are, you know, we, we don't have to make a whole lot of uh, effort to go to those. You know, it's always a pleasure. And I've been in so many countries, but Japan blew my mind. The culture, the people, the system they have there is unbelievable. So I got invited through a capoeira uh, friend. Uh, she has a the, uh, capoeira school there, as well as some other people that we know. And Pomba, has 10 DVDs that she's done on Samba. So she took classes and now she's bringing that culture to her uh, Japanese community. And I was very honored to be invited by her to go teach a Samba seminar in her school in Japan, in Tokyo. Um, the culture, the people, you know, I went there and I thought a class that was not very easy. and. I could see in their eyes and their body motions and gestures, even though I couldn't speak their language, I could see the love they had for the Brazilian culture and how much they wanted to learn. So I thought a one hour and a half seminar and at the end of it, I wanted to make it three, four hours because I just wanted to keep on teaching. Um, you know, they're so polite, they're so gentle, they're so loving. and. I just couldn't see, you know, I couldn't say better things about Japan and its people. It was unbelievable. I had a great time. So they were already advanced when you got there. So there, this your friend, is this friend that invited you, is she uh, Brazilian or Japanese? She's Japanese. Oh, wow. Um, she's done here in the US. Uh, she comes for a bunch of the capoeira um, seminars that we have here. And um, she invited me there. So she has students that are beginners and advanced. So she had different levels of students in the same class. And that's why I, I say I taught a class that could be, you know, followed by beginners, but as well as changing, uh, challenging right. those most advanced students. And all of them were, uh, you know, willing to learn and willing to put in the work to you know keep up with the class it was it was impressive i was very proud to see the work that she's been doing there and to add on you know to give back to that community that because they deserve so much they've been working so hard for it right Renata, it's such a great job what you do and I really expect you keep on going and going further along with your husband and the academy and get to know more places and always uh, promoting and taking the Brazilian culture with you. Thank you so much for the time you spent with us today. I'll give you a little space so you can say hello to the audience and of course share the page, the information of the academy. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such a pleasure. I wish we could continue to talk. Um, go, go to Facebook, go to Google, just search Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Capoeira or Samba in Kansas City. Um, our website is BrazilAcademyUSA.com and there you can find a whole bunch of photos and videos and information about what we do here. Awesome, Renata. Thank you so much. Always be well. Mwah. Until next time with me. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. After listening to Renata's experiences, I want to rescue the importance of the community. 
how important it is to find the people that like to do the same things that you do, or people that are in need of the same kind of motivation that you are. Also, I want to remind you that if you like to be encouraged, remember to encourage others. That's the powerful thing that a community always will bring to you. You have the chance to give and you have the chance to receive. I will see you again in seven days. If you know anybody in this world that would like to share their story, their lifestyle, their habits, whatever is positive for others, let me know. Write me to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. I'll be glad to connect with you. Until next time with me, goodbye.